Welcome to Crossroads. In today's episode, we'll be talking about how the United Nations is being accused of joining a terrorist network through UNRWA. And it's causing some pretty big disturbances internationally because of this. We talked about this before. It's now being exposed. Also, I want to clarify some reporting yesterday on the $9,000 being given to illegal aliens in Chicago for housing vouchers. Just a correction, it is not $9,000 a month. They're giving them $9,000 vouchers that they can use to rent a house and then buy furniture and stuff. Um, who knows if it will continue, but I'll be going into the details on that as well because it's still pretty wild. Now look, first of all though on the United Nations, they're being accused right now of having ties to terrorism. And this comes amid news that 12 members of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, that's UNRWA, which is a Palestine-focused branch of the UN, they were allegedly involved in the October 7 terror attacks on Israel. President Donald Trump had previously cut funding to this UN agency under concerns that, well, it had ties to Palestinian terror networks. And, of course, there's been a lot of controversy on it since, but they're still operating, and that might change soon. We'll see. Fox News said, in response to accusations that staffers of a United Nations agency were allegedly involved in the October 7 attack on, the, on Israel, Texas Republican uh, Representative Michael McCall reminded Americans that former President Donald Trump cut funding to the UN agency during his administration. And he said, quote, the United Nations Relief Agency, the previous Trump administration, cut all funding for a reason, just for this reason. The idea that UNRWA was actually supplying, you know, harboring weapons to assist with Hamas's invasion of Israel. That's the United Nations, folks. Now, McCall said this in a Fox News interview, and he continued by stating, now, those are the allegations that we have that have come out of Israel. We're investigating, but if true, think how outrageous that is. And currently, as of Saturday, the United States, the United Kingdom, and other Western powers have now cut funding to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, which is again called UNRWA, which is intended to provide relief and human humanitarian services to Palestinian refugees. Now, you might note uh, previously on Crossroads, we had an interview with Karis, uh, one of the producers of American Thought Leaders, uh, who has worked on reports and such about UNRWA. And one of the things that was raised with UNRWA is the way that they maintain, they, they game the humanitarian system in order to make it appear there's a larger crisis in Palestine than there actually is. They maintain the refugee status of every person. And because they do that on the books, it looks like they're dealing with a much larger crisis than they are. They get additional funding, they get additional programs, they can go and make a stink on the you know, evening news, and this is how they game the system. Meanwhile, many members of UNRWA have many times been exposed of having ties or expressing open support for Hamas and other terrorist organizations. It's been known for a very long time that they have this type of terror, you know, pro-terrorism leaning. And of course, you know, all of this, this is following accusations currently that 12 staffers of the group were involved in the attacks on Israel just recently. Now, Fox continues by stating the State Department under Trump had cut ties with UNRWA back in 2018. But guess what happened? President Joe Biden resumed the funding to the group shortly after he took office, as well as at the World Health Organization and other branches of the UN. It notes that he continued to increase spending to the organization with funds exceeding $1 billion. You're getting that, folks. We gave a $1 billion to a pro-terrorist organization of the United Nations that was known to have these types of ties that the United States had eliminated their funding to previously because of these types of ties, Biden gave them a billion dollars, more than that. And what happens? Well, just like we unlocked $10 billion for Iran and suddenly global terrorism starts up again, we gave a billion dollars to UNRWA and suddenly the Palestinian you know, terrorists through Hamas launch a terrorist attack on Israel. <sighs> Wild times, right? Now that being said, I mentioned that the ties of terrorism to UNRWA have been an ongoing concern. And I want to show you some evidence on this, just so you know I'm not just saying it. 
Many organizations have warned about UNRWA previously, including notably the fact that many members of this United Nations organization publicly support terrorism. This is a report from UN Watch. It says this, UN Watch continues to find abhorrent anti-Semitism and support for jihadi terrorism by UNRWA staff on social media. And this report details how UNRWA teachers in a 3,000 member UNRWA staff telegram group cheered and celebrated Hamas's October 7th massacre, while at the same time asking when their UNRWA salaries will be paid. In other words, they're being like, hey, congrats on murdering all those civilians. Hey, good job. They're saying like, praise Allah. And so if you read the text, it, they're public. If you read it, they're like saying praise Allah and you know, they're celebrating, right? Then they're like, hey, when do we get our United Nations paychecks? after this and in light of the attacks. It notes that the UNRWA staff in the group shared photos and video footage of those events, the terrorist attacks, and then prayed for the terrorist success and for Israel's destruction in clear violation of UN rules. You can't make this stuff up, folks. And of course, I won't go over the whole thing, but this report from UN Watch includes excerpts and examples and screenshots of all those different messages that UNRWA members, the United Nations organization members, were making on their private telegram channel uh, to openly support terrorism and celebrating it. All right, that said, um, I want to talk about something else. I discussed yesterday how the Biden administration is giving taxpayer money to the United Nations, to various NGOs, which are then helping facilitate the mass human trafficking of illegal immigrants into the United States and then facilitate their resettlement right here as our new neighbors. And we discussed also how recent United Nations documents show how illegal immigrants are being given debit cards, prepaid cash cards, even just straight up envelopes filled with money as part of the process of them being trafficked to the United States. They're paying them. And I mentioned at the same time, at the state level, illegal immigrants are also being given free housing, free food, and various other services. And all of this, from the NGOs to the United Nations to the resettlement operations right here in the U.S., uh, American taxpayers are shouldering most of the cost for every single level of this. We are paying for our own destruction. The government's sending us a check for our own noose. And, of course, I mentioned as well that in Chicago, the illegal immigrants are being given $9,000 vouchers. I should briefly clarify, I made an error on this yesterday. Uh, to clarify, these are not monthly payments. They're not getting $9,000 a month. But, according to reports, the $9,000 they're getting, because they are getting it, it's a six-month payment to the illegal immigrants in Chicago that they can then use to go rent an apartment and then buy furniture and other things for their apartment. In other words, they're giving them a $9,000 voucher to go and rent a place and then you know, buy whatever furniture they want for it. We would assume that in addition to that $9,000 for that six months or whatever they use it for, uh, that of course you know, it's going to run out eventually, and uh, we'll see if that means Chicago keeps having to pay rent for them uh, after that $9,000 out, wears out. But, of course, this is not every single month, to clarify. But let me show you what's happening, because this is still pretty wild. Daily Mail had this. They said Chicago is giving $9,000 in rental assistance to migrants in need of temporary housing, after it paid a medical firm a staggering $7.2 million for staffing shelters for just one week. It says, this is according to official records, now, the Windy City, Chicago, is struggling right now, they say, with over 11,000 migrants in shelters and 4,000 staying in police stations and the O'Hare International Airport after more than 18,000 have arrived in the city in one year. Now, I should clarify, they're making a big deal. 18,000 people. You have like more than 200,000 arriving every month. The Biden administration in their negotiations with Republicans wants to legally or semi-legally allow 15, 150,000 roughly illegal aliens to enter the U.S. every single month before they even start enforcing border laws. Now, look, it says further in. 
to free up much needed room in these shelters, right? Because they have to give spaces to all the illegal aliens. The state of Illinois, because Chicago is there, is helping cover the costs for temporary housing for migrants, including $9,000 in rental assistance over a six month period. Chicago's Deputy Chief of Staff, Christina Pacione Zayas, told Fox 32. It says the funds include assistance with moving costs and a starter kit to furnish their apartments. It says the city has allocated $4 million to help migrants find temporary housing. And the state has contributed another $38 million. It's unclear how many migrants are currently benefiting from the program. In other words, they're telling us a little bit. They're not telling us everything. We don't really know the full details, let alone, again, as I mentioned, what happens when that money runs out in six months or less? Because you're also basing this on the concept that they're spending the money responsibly and not sending it home in remittances to pay off their you know, traffickers and so on, or give to their families. Now, of course, this money does not cover the many other free programs that the illegal immigrants are getting. So the $9,000 each of them gets is not the full amount that they're receiving. Uh, they're getting more uh, because, of course, it takes place in other forms. And also, it is unclear whether the cities will continue paying them for their free housing after those six months are up. Uh, but you have seen cases where legal immigrants are getting booted out of some of the places where they're squatting or the shelters and so on. And that's becoming a big controversy in some of these states because we're, we're in a weird place in the United States right now. We're after, remember during COVID, where people paying rent, if you were delinquent on your rent, you were not held liable for it, which was a major serious blow to landlords. Imagine you're a landlord and you're maybe an elderly man or woman, and you know, you make your money, your, your ability to buy groceries every, every month maybe comes from the rent money. And suddenly the people renting from you no longer have to pay you because the federal government told them they don't have to. And suddenly all the properties you used to get money from, you still have to pay the bills and everything on top of it, but you're no longer receiving money from these individuals. The government legalized squatting and they legalized the ability in many cases of individuals to move into an apartment, never leave and not pay rent. And that's gonna become a real problem as you have illegal immigrants who cannot work in many cases or just plain old don't wanna work because they're giving government handouts who are in apartments and cannot be evicted. <laughs> and look, there's a bit more on that program in Chicago that again is giving them $9,000 for rent. Epic Times said the new program is on top of additional funding that has already been set aside to help illegal immigrants. In May, the Chicago City Council announced that $51 million in financial aid from the budget would go toward addressing the flood of immigrants. And it says, meanwhile, residents who see their fellow Chicagoans still living on the streets are outraged over what they consider a criminal misdirection of funds. Because look, Chicago has one of the highest murder rates in the country. Chicago's not doing so hot. Chicago has a lot of problems domestically. And, you know, if you talk to a lot of people who support big government and high taxes, they'll often bring up the issue, you know, you want to lower taxes, but who's going to pay for the schools? Think about the children. You have schools that don't have air conditioners and these poor inner city children who live in poor neighborhoods that do not have the budget from taxpayers to properly you know, provide the services they need are living in difficult conditions and it's impacting the future of these neighborhoods because kids get a poor education, they drop out or graduate on a poor education and they find that there's no opportunities for them. And so they say to fix the problem, fix the schools. And you need taxpayer dollars to do that. But what does it mean when cities right now, like Chicago and other places, rather than use our tax money to help the locals, rather than use our tax money to help you know, needy children and you know, give air conditioners to public schools and maybe provide basic food services, are instead using that money to give free handouts to people violating the law to illegally enter the United States and put themselves up in like all the nice places, which notably because, uh, because there is a limited supply of housing. And of course, the way that supply and demand works is that if there's higher demand and a lower supply, prices are gonna skyrocket. 
This means that the cost of living in all these places is going to increase. The cost of rent is going to increase, um, especially as government is subsidizing the ability of people to pay their rent. And as the cost of rent increases, and if the homes are being given to you know, illegal aliens instead of American citizens, you can expect a lot of American citizens to get pushed into homeless shelters, to maybe become homeless, or to barely get by, especially in poor neighborhoods like this. And on that note, the program is deeply controversial in Chicago. A lot of people are very unhappy about it. Because, again, you know, one of the big narratives of the left, typically, is that, you know, we need these taxes, we need high taxes, we need to tax the millionaires and the billionaires, as Bernie Sanders might say, it, in order to make sure everybody is just okay, everybody is getting the things they need. And rather than provide the things that American citizens need, the government is redirecting those funds to just free food, free handouts, free schooling, free houses, free cars in some cases, to illegal immigrants. And of course the people who are in a difficult situation in Chicago, a lot of the poorer communities, um, especially a lot of the black communities, they're very angry about this. And there's a lot of videos of people angry about this. American citizens are not being given the types of benefits that the illegal aliens are getting. And citizens who live in poor conditions are now having to sit back and watch as the government and the local government just gives free handout after free handout to the illegal immigrants in front of them that they're not eligible for. And the money for that is not like, it's not like uh, the local city council in Chicago is working extra hard to generate more wealth. No, they're using your money. They're using American tax dollars. The government is not generating wealth, they're taking wealth. And taking that wealth and giving it to people who aren't even American citizens in this case. Uh, giving it to people who should be deported, actually. People who are in violation of American law. And so, wild times we're in, right? Now, also, given all of this, you have something else pretty big happening right now. The Department of Homeland Security Chief Alexander, Alejandro Mayorkas could soon be impeached. And the House Republicans are, of course, working on this. As always, it's split, you know, Democrat, Republican. You, you're always going to have that, even on controversial issues like this. Things that typically the Democrats would kind of agree on. They still, it, it's just politics, right? But right now, again, there's a push to impeach Mayorkas, the head of the Department of Homeland Security. Washington Examiner says this, and I'll explain why this really matters, actually. But let me say this first. It says the House Homeland Security Committee will take up articles of impeachment for willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law and breach of the public trust against Mayorkas, according to the committee. And this is, of course, because Mayorkas, as a federal government employee tasked with securing America's borders, is delinquent in his duties. Rather than secure America's borders, he is helping facilitate mass illegal immigration into the U.S. And this is, of course, causing serious uh, abuse, I would say, of the American people, crime, lack of funds, uh, humanitarian crisis, child trafficking. There's a lot of missing children now, tens of thousands of them. And really just causing, you know, problems of probably what could be gangs and maybe irreversible crime in the United States across the whole country. Now, they say that these, not to mention terror threats, especially as we're getting pulled into a global terror war yet again. Now, they note this. These articles lay out a clear, compelling, and irrefutable uh, case for Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas' impeachment, said House Homeland Security Chairman Mark Green, a Republican. And he said this in a statement, continuing, he, as in Mayorkas, has willfully and systemically refused to comply with immigration laws enacted by Congress. He's not following the law. And notes that he has breached the public trust by knowingly making false statements to Congress and the American people and obstructing congressional oversight of his department. Secretary Mayorkas has also completely disregarded the separation of powers, a bedrock of our constitutional republic. And good for them for noting America is not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. And they continue stating Congress has a duty 
to see that the executive branch, the federal government, implements and enforces the laws we have passed. And he continued, it is time we take this affront to a colloquial branch of government, to the Constitution and the American people seriously. The House of Representatives must impeach Secretary Mayorkas. Now, before I go into my take on this, Mayorkas is saying otherwise. And here's what he's saying. Fox News says that Homeland Secu uh, uh, Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas on Tuesday took aim at what he called baseless and false accusations leveled against him by House Republicans ahead of a key vote on impeachment articles in the House Homeland Security Committee. And he said, quote, I assure you that your false accusations do not rattle me and do not divert me from the public law from the law enforcement and broader public service mission to which I have devoted my most of my career and to which I remain devoted. He said in a lengthy letter to House Homeland Security Sec Security Committee Chair Mark Green. He notes the committee is meeting to advance two articles of impeachment against Mayorkas, accusing him of refusing to follow immigration law again and of breaching public trust. They're going to be working on this. It's probably going to move forward, but further in it states that Republicans are accusing him of a dereliction of duty, as well as to the Biden administration overall. It notes that migrant numbers officially hit 302,000 people in December, in one month, which is a new record after 2.4 million encounters in the fiscal year 2023. Last year, 2.4 million people illegally entering the United States based on the ones we know about, because these are encounters, meaning it does not include the so-called gotaways, the ones who are not accounted for. It notes that Republicans have set that large release into the interior, have said that, sorry, said that large release into the interior of the United States and a rolling back of Trump era policies have fueled the crisis. Uh, because of course, Trump was talking about building the wall and deporting people and enforcing border rules. Now look, my take on this, it's going to be very difficult for Mayorkas to defend this, given the fact that this is all now being exposed. It's going to be hard for him to say that he is not being delinquent on his duties, because, you know, part of the narrative was, it's not I who have opened the border. It is, it is merely the, you know, fault of these illegal immigrants who were trying desperately to process, and we have a lack of money. As we know, the money the Biden administration wants is not going to defend the border. Instead, it's going to people processing the amnesty claims and, you know, basically running the Disney lines coming into the U.S. That's all they're doing. They're processing people coming into the United States illegally, and they're gaming the, of course, amnesty system. They're gaming the parole system. And by using these legal loopholes, the Department of Homeland Security and the Biden administration overall are facilitating the mass illegal immigration of the United States from these countries. At the same time, they're using taxpayer dollars openly now. We now know, even though they've denied it repeatedly, they're using taxpayer dollars to finance and bankroll and coordinate the siege of the United States, the raiding of the United States. Uh, they are working through the International Organization for Migration, as we discussed yesterday, which is under the United Nations. They're paying them. They're giving them money for them. And they're even looking at a threefold increase of the budget to the UN to run these mass illegal immigration operations into the United States this coming year, which means this coming year could see maybe three times as, as much as we did last year. And keep in mind, last year was like 2.4 million people illegally entering, more larger than the population of many U.S. states. Democrats are defending Mayorkas and Biden's policies. They're standing by him. But remember, many Democrat cities are facing serious issues with the open border program. It's not a popular program even among Democrats. But the narrative they're pushing to defend themselves, the Democrats, on this is they're saying the cause of the problem is Texas because Texas is sending busloads of illegal immigrants into other states. And on Biden's repeated claim that he needs the approval of congressional budgets to secure the border. Again, those narratives don't hold up now. The argument that it's Texas's fault for sending busloads of illegal immigrants across the country it's not holding up because Texas tried securing its border 
They tried building barriers and tried deporting people and they tried making, the, they are making laws locally that allow them to charge illegal aliens with, you know, crimes for entering Texas. The Biden administration is suing them. The Biden administration has given orders to uh, Border Patrol to go and cut the wire, to go and remove border barriers. And the federal government under the Biden administration, the Democrats, is actively trying to eliminate border security in the open now. And so it's hard for them to keep that narrative going. At the same time, we now know that the argument of them needing more money to you know, fix the problem is a lie because we can look at what they're asking you know, to the money to be used for, which is again, not to secure the border, but to instead put more people in place to process the illegal immigrants, to allow them into our country. And we also know on the argument that, uh, you know, this is, uh, let's say, Texas's fault. We know the Biden administration, through the State Department and other branches of government, is financing the entire operation to have the United States flooded with illegal immigrants. And of course, this is causing real problems for Americans. If you talk about the delinquency of duty, the fact that the officials tasked, one of the few tasks of the, of the federal government, tasked with securing the United States, with securing our borders, with making sure Americans are not being abused by foreign powers. They're delinquent in that duty. And as this happens, Americans are facing crime waves. Americans are being victimized. Americans are facing serious problems. Homelessness, skyrocketing rents, higher costs of living, uh, at the same time that you have crime waves, you also have the woke, you know, anti-police movements pushed under the defund the police policies of the Democrats, which they're trying to put on Republicans now, by the way. And of course, you're seeing the effects of this. One example in Vermont, Front Page Magazine said that shootings right now are up 185% from 2021 to 2022. And the Burlington mayor, uh, Miro Wein Weinberger, uh, is complaining about this, saying, we are not used to this level of violence in Vermont. They say that this city it racked up another five murders just recently. And it says that that may not be much, but it gives the normally sleepy city where Bernie Sanders got his start a, high, <coughs> a higher murder rate than Philadelphia. It notes, when James Eaton, a mentally unstable leftist who had praised Hamas, shot and wounded three Arab Muslims, uh, Muslim men outside of his home, the media eagerly diverted attention from the crime wave to the shooter who was conveniently white while falsely blaming it on Islamophobia. The discredited hoax, because it turned out to be fake, was not only trying to rally support for terrorists, but also to distract attention from the real perpetrators of the violence that, was that has overtaken Bernie Sanders' old city. It notes further in, the shooters in Burlington, Vermont, uh, are much are sorry are much more likely to be Muslim male teens. Another recent shootout uh, shooting in the Burlington area made the national news when Hussein Mohammed, the underage son of Somali immigrant, of a Somali immigrant who didn't speak English, shot and killed Madden, a local 14-year-old boy. It was reported that state police were unable to make an arrest despite at least two eyewitnesses from the car providing multiple false statements about the crime. <sighs> because remember, if you profile a criminal now, you may be guilty of discrimination. If you're like, uh, it was a man. They're like, what is a, what is a man? <laughs> Imagine the police dispatcher. How dare you misgender the criminal? How dare you assume their gender? I, I believe the individual was a Somali immigrant. How dare you, you racist? <laughs> you know, this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with right now. And again, it's causing some real problems. You know, we're, we're gonna get to the point where people are gonna have to call in crimes. Like, can you identify the suspect? And unless it's like, oh, he was a white Christian male, you know, that, that's the only one that's allowed. Uh, you, can, you can't say gender, you can't say race, you can't describe features. They're gonna be looking for like an individual, possibly human, you know, when, when, they, when they do the police searches at this rate. Now look, even Democrat cities, though, are reaching a breaking point with this. They, they cannot withstand the pressure being placed on them, which makes you again wonder why the Biden administration is so dead set on increasing and maintaining the raid of the United States. 
Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson, according to Town Hall, implemented a new policy that gives illegal migrants a 60-day shelter limit before they're forced to take up space elsewhere. Now, remember, part of this is they're giving people like $9,000 to go rent apartments and buy furniture. Uh, but this is causing other issues as well, mainly because of the, the whole squatter rights thing that's been introduced into America. But it notes that the city's 16 aldermen include close allies of Johnson sent a letter to the mayor urging him to terminate his policy, claiming it poses a significant threat to the health and safety of new arrivals. In other words, they're saying you cannot evict these people. Even if the mayor is like, we're, we don't have the money, we're going to go bankrupt and the entire city is going to go belly up. We cannot pay the living expenses of this many people who want to come here and live for free. And the woke individuals within the party itself are saying, ah, you can't do that. You have to give everybody a house. And if you evict them, you're, you're an evil Nazi or something. Now, it notes the policy was due to take effect in mid-January, but it was delayed due to the city's very, very, very cold temperatures. It says further in that at least 2,000 illegal immigrants are set to be evicted if the policy is enforced by February 1st. That number is expected to grow to about 6,000 people by the following week. And the letter ur argues the city must delay evictions until the warmer months and instead focus on helping illegal aliens become independent. It says since 2022, at least 608 buses have arrived in Texas by Governor Greg Abbott. Again, they're, bra they're blaming Abbott for this. With more than 34,000 illegal immigrants landing in Chicago. As, and note here, by the way, the numbers change from media to media. One media will be like 14,000 in Chicago. It will be like 16,000 in Chicago. This one's saying 34,000 in Chicago. Frankly, I don't believe any of their numbers. I don't believe any of it. They, because they change depending on who you go to. I don't think they even know personally. And I think maybe those who do know are trying to prevent us from knowing. Uh, there's a very weird cover-up on the government, state government, and federal government level on how big this problem is and what it actually means for us as, as we head deeper into it. We don't, we don't fully know the details on this. And of course, House Republicans are trying to get information on all of this, but they're not able to because people like DHS Secretary Mayorkas are refusing to give Congress information when they request it. Look, if this was tables turned and the Democrats are the ones leading Congress, they'd be charging these people with crimes for refusing to testify, for refusing to provide evidence. You know, this uh, contempt of Congress charge that notably some Trump uh, team guys are going to prison for now. They're putting Navarro in prison for this right now. Li literally, he got charged with it. He's, he's going to go to prison. But further in it notes, as of January 16th, there were 28 shelters in operation within the city of Chicago, holding roughly 14,967 immigrants. And on February 1st, 7,842 illegal immigrants will receive eviction notices. And now we know they're also receiving $9,000. <laughs> they're receiving $9,000 to go and rent a place. And I guarantee you they're going to have a problem with these illegal immigrants who believe that they deserve and they're entitled to free houses and free cars and free food and free schooling and free furniture and free everything else, they're going to put their arms up and say, I'm not moving out. I can't pay my rent, but I'm not going anywhere. And Chicago is going to have to deal with the problem of you know, basically squatters in these apartments. It's going to make the housing problem very serious there. Just watch. Now, Briefly, I mentioned my take on Alejandro Mayorkas, the DHS secretary, and given this, the various issues we're watching. In my opinion, the case to impeach him is very strong, and it, they're probably not going to be able to impeach him at both the House and the Senate. More than likely, Democrats are going to circle the wagons around Biden, because Biden is blaming Republicans in Congress for not passing the budget, and he's saying that's why we can't secure the border. Um, again, it's it's not true, but at least it's not true. Not even in my. It's just plain old not true. Uh, he's lying, frankly. He he wants to facilitate illegal immigration, not stop it. So it's it's a lie. He's he's not being honest. Um, at the same time, they're also blaming Texas for it. They're not going to get off their lie. They're they're not going to admit that they're lying. 
frankly, because it's politics, and this is just part of the political battle we have right now. Um, even though you do have a lot of Democrats, noting the problem is getting out of hand, I should note. My point being, when it comes to the push to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas, the benefit of this for Republicans is not so much to, you know, actually impeach him. Uh, maybe Biden would appoint somebody even worse, right? Um, that's p very possible, frankly. The value in this is that the impeachment inquiry process will allow Congress to carry out deeper investigations. They'll be able to issue subpoenas for documents. It'll be much more difficult for the Biden administration to block that process. Uh, they'll also be able to call in witnesses more easily. And as they call in witnesses, we'll be able to get publicly, uh, of course, testimony, documents, details, and the information we've been trying to get for a very long time on why the Biden administration is doing this. What makes them care so much about bringing in these illegal immigrants that they're willing to bankrupt New York and Chicago and everywhere else? That they're willing to, in front of welfare recipients in the United States, give free money and free houses and free everything else to non-citizens right in front of their faces? That while America is facing a fentanyl crisis and increasing homelessness and other issues like this, they don't seem to be interested in the welfare of American citizens. Um, we're going to get answers on why it's so important to them, that they are willing to carry that out, that it's more important to them than that. And we're also going to be getting details on just how many individuals they are, just maybe where these missing children are going, because we know the unaccompanied minors are being given to unknown individuals. Some of the houses that children are being sent to turn out to be vacant lots. There's nothing there. And when the authorities try to make phone calls to find out, hey, where'd this child go? Uh, and it's nobody answers the phone twice, they give up and the child is deemed lost. You have probably mass child sex trafficking, maybe slave labor, and a lot of other problems starting up. And we would assume the federal government at least has some knowledge of this. The impeachment inquiry will allow Congress, if they so choose, to look into these issues, to be able to get the details that are being withheld from the public. And in my opinion, that is the value of that.